All Yes, right. sir. All right, all right. Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, what, sorry. So, uh, we're talking about three things mainly. All right. The first thing is what holiness is and removing every form of this um, a misconception that people have about it. All right. Then we're talking about uh, why this topic is important. All right. And finally, we are talking about practical tips on how to achieve holiness mm -hmm. in your relationship. All right. So, uh, babe, do you have anything to add? We can get started. Yeah, I would like to say that for, uh, well, in the context of what we are talking about today, um, dating means being in courtship, like in a relationship, yes. not, not trial and error, because yes. there are different definitions of dating nowadays. Yes. So we are saying, oh, you are in a committed relationship where there's marriage in view. You are mm -hmm. not just testing the waters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. Thank you for chipping that in. All right. Uh, and also we have those, those were we have two assumptions. Mm. So the first assumption is that dating is not testing the mic. All right. <laughs> <laughs> dating is not sound check. All right. Dating for you means um you have an intention to get married. All right. Uh of course we're going to see more about that even as we talk about holiness. And then uh, the second assumption is that we are all united by our understanding of Christianity, all right, the basics of Christianity that we are all Christians Christian. and we are submitted mm -hmm. to the wisdom of God, mm -hmm. to the, the wisdom, to the lordship of Jesus, mm -hmm. all right, and to the authority mm -hmm. of the scripture, all right. So, having that understanding, so we can say anything and I mean, founded on the truth of the scripture, all right. So, um, uh, I would also like to add that uh, while while praying, you know, about this, one of the words that uh, came in our hearts, all right, is uh, power couples, mm -hmm. all right. And I will get to define what a power couple, what I what we believe a power couple is, and uh, believing that God will be raising power couples even from this place, mm -hmm. all right, or people that are trusting God, you know, to do great and mighty things mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God. And even on earth within their lifetime, all right, for God, all right. Oh, I can we can see uh, Sister Latifa, greetings to you, all right. So, um, okay, so I, I will, not, will not go over the bodies for the meeting, all right, but we'll go over yes. what is holiness. But before we go into that, sorry, we have a note here. Before we go into that, all right, um, uh. I want to paint a picture of the kind of relationship most people here want, all right? So I believe there's a kind of relationship that almost everybody, sometimes even unbelievers, mm -hmm. that's what they want, all right? And I believe that it is a relationship with someone that you both love each other faithfully mm -hmm. and intentionally, right? You want someone that you love one another faithfully, faithful one another. Uh, yes, and intentional about it, mm -hmm. all right? Then uh, you want a relationship that glorifies God, and reveals the glory of God, all right? So, like I said the other time, all right, we want a relationship that when people look at you, they be like, oh, so sweet, you know, uh, how beautiful, all right? A relationship that when people look at it, they just admire to have something like that. And I must say that that kind of relationship, uh, sometimes it is not amongst Christians that we find it, all right? Sometimes, all right? Uh, it, so in fact, some people, the kind of memories, the kind of um, uh, memories they have about relationship, about marriage, is sometimes what they don't really want. And some of them come up with a conclusion mm. you know, that they don't want to get married. Mm. All right. And finally, uh, we believe also that people want a relationship that will bring life to the hopeless. Now, this is about purpose-driven relationship now. All right. A relationship that will bring life to the hopeless healing to the broken, freedom to the captive, and strength to the weary, all right? However, what stops many people from getting to this level in their relationships, all right, is poor understanding and alignment to holiness demands. Yeah. All right, so there are demands, there, there are things that we're expected to understand with respect to holiness. I'll just give a very practical example and i hope more practical examples will come up even as we are talking as as we go along the way all right uh this is me jumping uh ahead now all right 
uh, for every relationship, there's something uh, that is like a unique demand. That there's an assignment that you have. All right, we have our individual assignments and we also have our corporate assignments, right? Mm -hmm. And for that assignment, there are specific- uh, Consecrations. Exactly. There are specific consecrations. There are spe and those consecrations, as you meet them, you create an atmosphere where certain things yeah. can happen. Even for the assignment to blossom. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right. So this is important for fulfillment, to, to have fulfillment yes, in, in marriage. All right. So then uh, we go over to the misconceptions. Well, there are lots of misconceptions. Even the word holiness in itself, yeah. you know, people have a lot of misconceptions about it. Mm -hmm. um, for the purpose of this meeting, we like to focus on two major misconceptions. Misconceptions, yeah. You know, there is the school of thought where some people believe that holiness has to do with the art alone. Yeah. And, well, has less or nothing to do with what you do because, oh, well, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. You just I have the nature so that's all that matters, true. you know, which is not entirely true. Mm -hmm. Well, there are some that focus more on the works. Mm -hmm. You know, I go to church, I pay my tithes, mm -hmm. you know, I'm nice, I'm good to people, then I'm holy. Mm -hmm. And if you check the state of their hearts, mm -hmm. you know, it's, if, in fact, if you should open their hearts and peep into it, you'd be surprised, mm -hmm. you know, but they look only by their works, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, it's good. Would the works and the nature mm. is good, mm. but being on two extreme ends mm. is not so good. Mm. There's usually the balance needed, mm. you know, where your heart is in good standing, yeah, and at the same time it reflects, mm. you know, in your works. Mm. That's powerful. Yeah, that's powerful. All right. And many times you see, um, sister say, I want to probably marry a holy brother. All right. And the picture in our mind is somebody that is very active, that can preach. That pray. <laughs> that pray. When he's praying, the roof is doing like this. <laughs> All right. And we see uh, brothers also saying they want to marry a holy sister. All right. The sister that is kneeling down, if, depending on the culture from yeah. where you have. Right. The sister that probably says, sir, yes, sir. Um, depending on the culture again, because uh, sometimes culture influences uh, even our definition sometimes, yeah. right? Uh, the sister that dresses according to the holy, holy, what holiness is within, you know, um, the description of your culture. But, you know, in addition to that, there are actually some other people who want the only brother, but want a little touch of <laughs> Yes, ah, we that. are only, but we can still kiss, you know. Yes, we are only, but we can still yeah. do some things. They want only brother, but a touch of holy wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So all these are misconceptions, all right? Um, they are misconceptions. And um, before we go into what holiness really is, all right, we would just like to um, also give some of the consequences <laughs> some of the consequences of you know um these misconceptions all right one of them is the fact that the person that says holiness is of the heart and not about what you do all right they end up not you know uh not bringing out the the life of god into their relationship yeah. they, they, they are not even trying all right so uh you see um uh, a, a a a prayerful person all right, that is not growing in love. Mm. All right, you see a, 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 a talented person that has the gift of the Spirit, all right, but they don't have the character of Christ. Of Christ. They don't mm. have the fruit of the Spirit, all right? Mm. Why? Because they, they just believe that is my, my heart is right, so it doesn't matter what I do. And it is important when the Bible says that we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. All right. It's, it's not just talking about unbelievers, but it's also talking about even within the fold of believers. There are still people that also have different mindsets, different understanding of the scripture. Yeah. So if you meet such people and you think, OK, because we go to the same church all right, that is all. All right. You might miss out on some uh, some important things when it comes mm -hmm. to mutual understanding mm -hmm. and for the other ones all right that says that uh is about the action all right you, we can be easily carried away by the actions of people yeah. so you see you say because the brother is nice 
all right but because the sister is this all right that means um they are fervent all right but we don't know what is the condition of their heart all right so uh holiness is in threefold all right so we go over to what holiness really is mm. all right uh what holiness really is uh now both both sides is just like this grace and uh, works all right yeah. both sides are actually uh not totally incorrect because it begins from the heart mm -hmm. all right which and is the which is the nature that god has given to us all right then it translates into our action mm -hmm. so if i look at someone now all right uh, i don't say he's only just because of what he does mm -hmm. all right but he's only because god has made him holy all right from first peter one nine all right then uh but if his action is not corresponding to that yeah all right that means there's something questionable is either is growing all right towards being able to act in that all right or there's something that is fundamentally uh not right somewhere because as a man thinks in his heart Sorry. so he is all right so we come over to uh what is okay. holiness all right uh, uh, I'm not sure there's a particular scripture that, defi I mean, before we can talk about holiness in dating, right? Mm. We have to know what holiness actually is, right? Yeah, true. And uh, we, we, we are in this together, right? <laughs> 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 All right. Um, and also, uh, we also have to understand that what makes a relationship holy, what makes a marriage holy, mm all right, is the presence of God in it. Yeah. And that's what we are talking about here, all right? So to understand most of the nature of God, you can draw something like a triangle. Sorry, we, we, can't, we can't hear you. Oh, all right, all right. How okay. about now? It's, I think yes, it's a of disruption. Yeah, now it's okay. All right, all right. All right, so uh, but just to shake us up a little to know what comes to our mind, uh, when, when we hear holiness, what comes to your mind? All right, so let's just hear that. What comes to your mind when you hear um, that something is holy or uh, oh, someone, is, someone holy. is holy? What comes to your mind? All right, so while waiting for the answers on that, all right, uh, I will give uh, an analogy, all right, uh, like an analogy that someone gave. I don't know, I think maybe it's a joke. Someone brought a an offering, like um, a, a, gift. a gift, all right, to the temple to give to God. And upon getting to the temple, all right, he realized that uh, he, brought the wrong gift. he had brought the wrong gift. So he wanted to run back and go and change to the right one. Then the priest told him, all right, that no, 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 you can't go. You can't take this away because you have given it to God, all right, and he's already uh, set apart yeah. onto God. I think that's the word. All right. So uh, um, bringing this, all right, I would just also like to read from Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. All right, if you are there, uh, please let's just turn together. All right, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. All right, so here they're talking about the glory of God, right? Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With train, he covered his face, and with twain, he covered his feet. And with twin, he did fly. All right. Now they are talking about beings, all right, that are surrounding, you know, that mountain, that presence. And one cried unto one another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, you see, they were talking about the holiness of God and they were talking about the glory of God. All right. So holiness is that nature, that attribute of God. All right, that makes him just set apart from any other thing, from every other thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, you know, uh, in science we have uh, different standards of measurements. All right, we have uh, meter, uh, we have uh, um, um, yeah, we have uh, Celsius and all that. All right, when it comes to holiness, God is the standard mm -hmm. for measuring holiness. All right, so uh, uh, as a result of that. 
we can set ourselves apart unto God. Yeah. All right. Because He is the standard. Because He is the standard. Yeah. We can set our relationship apart unto unto, the... unto God. All right. Yeah. And we are going to get to why this is important. Uh, we do that, and it is important we have that understanding. All right. But again, uh, I also want to read from First Peter, chapter one, verse nine. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises. So here he's talking about something that we have, not because of what you have done. So the man that brought a gift, for instance, to the temple, mm -hmm. all right, he, the, and the temple and the gift became holy. Mm -hmm. It's not because of what the gift did, right? Yeah. It is because of a change in ownership, mm -hmm. all right? So uh, the same thing also applies when, uh, so yeah, he's saying that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, all right? In other words, this is something that had been concluded. This is something that had been done by God. Immediately we came into salvation, all right? Our identity, that nature is impacted onto us, mm -hmm. all right? And this is one of the reasons why we can't just judge someone by their action. Mm -hmm. You also have to find out that what is the nature of this person? All right. So if you are in a relationship with someone that does not have that identity, that nature of holiness, what happens is, all right, so I'm living from the part of the nature now and I'm coming into the part of the culture, all right, which is the action. All right. So a lot of time we want to control the action. All right. To to uh, if I act right, then I am right. If I act holy, then I'm holy. Mm -hmm. All right. But it is the nature of that yes. brings about that. Yeah. So if you see someone that is acting holy but does not have, that has not been imparted with the nature of holiness, what happens is there's no uh, uh, there's no divinity that is uh, sponsoring that. that. Yeah. All right. So at a particular time, the person is just like a car that is running without fuel, you know, down uh, a slopey place. Then after a time, it gets to the um, to the uh, flat region. And it becomes difficult to climb, yeah. all right? And that's what happens many times in many relationships. What sponsors that nature of holiness, the desire for God, the desire for the presence of God, is the impartation of that nature. Yeah. Do you want to add something? Yeah, I wanted to say that, you know, um, if we claim to be of God, yeah. if we claim to be, to have received the life of God, yeah. then... If God is set apart, mm. you know, we said he's a, he's a standard, he's True. set apart, then actually we should also be set apart. True. You know, yes, we are set apart unto him. But even people should be able to know that, you know, this person is set apart unto God. Mm. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Perfectly. If we are of God, we claim to be of God, then we should be separate unto him, mm. not by mouth mm. not by saying oh i'm a christian or i mm. feel it for myself i'm a mm. christian yeah we should be set apart mm. in everything we do mm. in our relationship mm. um most especially yeah. since we are talking about relationship yeah uh, and that totally makes sense you know because uh i i'll just add this perspective to it all right if i give you something that thing no longer belongs to me right Yes. All right. So that means you are in charge of what happens to it. Yes. All right. And that is exactly why the Bible says that our body is a temple of God. All right. Why? Because we have been consecrated. We have been sanctified. Yeah. All right. And you know, God. God wants. I. I, I could. I could. I could understand. You know, God helping me to understand that scripture. That the reason why sometimes we struggle with some things, things like addiction, even sometimes maybe things like receiving healing, is because we have not gotten to that place of knowing that our body belongs to God, mm. Mm. all right? Mm. Because it has not dawned on us that our body belongs to God. So anything we give God, what happens is the usage of that thing is now determined by God. By God. Yes. All right. So yes. and the same thing also applies to our relationship, all right? So uh, I remember we were talking just before now, and uh, uh, we were like asking, so does it mean that God makes the choice of who you marry? And we say yes and no. Mm. All right. Why is it yes? It is yes because your life is no longer yours. All right. God has a, an ultimate purpose for you. All right. And because you have been set apart for God, mm -hmm. everything that comes through you has to also be set apart sure. for God. Mm -hmm. Your children are set apart for God. Your spouse is set apart for God. Your um, your work 
is your finances is set apart for God, all right? So, and why no? No, because sometimes uh, people now throw the responsibility to God and to, not do the work. Exactly. <laughs> they, they throw the responsibility to God that uh, God, I'm waiting on God to choose my spouse. I'm waiting on God to do this, all right? No, it reminds me of this um, skit that I've been, random skit that I've been saying that, oh, you as a woman, yeah, you want to be in a relationship and yeah. God is coding you that do you go out? Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you go to the public place where people can see you, but you stay indoor? Okay. You're not putting in the effort for people to see you and you're waiting on God to oh, be yes. man. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's work to be done on both ends. Yeah. 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 So so the thing is, uh, God wants to, he wants everything to be set apart for him so that he can lead us by his spirit. spirit. But the Bible says, as many as are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. All right. And that includes even in our relationship. All right. So uh, uh, we've talked about the nature of God. Then we've talked, we were talking just about the culture of holiness. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, you see, the angels, they were shouting holy and holy and holy. Even when, if you get to heaven now, uh, that's what the elders are, mm -hmm. are saying. They are, it's a response to a glory that they cannot resist. There's an atmosphere around God that provokes them to say yeah. that. All right. And exactly that same thing is what one of the things that the dimensions that God wants to reveal in us, through us, around us. All right. But that happens when we are, uh, we allow ourselves to be set apart to God. And uh, we are not saying this in a religious way. We are saying it in a personal way, such that whatever it is, you know, that God is leading you to set apart, you set it apart and saying that I no longer have a personal control over this. All right. And it is important we realize that this is, first of all, a personal choice before it becomes a, a, corporate, a corporate choice. Yeah, for the relationship, yeah. All right. Because your relationship is as set apart as okay. you are set apart. Yeah. So if you are 10 percent set apart, don't expect a relationship that is 100 percent set apart True. because the other person is setting apart. All right. Uh, is not going to totally just cover up for your own setting apart. All right. Yeah. So we can go on. Yeah. So, okay. I think we can go on to the why. All right. So, we go on to why. Why is, it? Why is holiness important? All right. And uh, you want to say something? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, maybe before we go on to the why, you yeah. know, we're talking about power couples. Yeah. You know, well, it's seeing, seeing power couples, not just by seeing good pictures of couples and say, oh, power couple, power couple, you know, just to touch a bit on when you said that. Um, we need um, we need to host the presence of God, mm. you know, talking about holiness and hosting the presence of God. Mm. So if you are talking about power couples, you know, there are couple there it's a, it's, are couples that host the presence of God and, so they yield, are couples. <laughs> and, and yield their relationship to the glory of God, mm. you know. Yeah. So in, in other words, everything I do gives glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything we do in the relationship. Amen gives glory to god mm. you know that's what makes a power couple mm. you know mm. in everything we do mm. that's what makes a power couple everything we do gives glory to god mm. you know and i like to say and i usually like to say that my relationship should be one that populates heaven and depopulates hell amen you know mm. when people see us they are not doubting ah but you guys call yourself christians mm. they are not they are not in doubt mm. they are sure you know, because of the fruit they are seeing mm. from the relationship, mm. you know. So, yes, power couples are people that give glory to God, mm. even in purpose or mm. any other thing they mm. do. You know, Hallelujah. they don't... Scripture says one will chase a 10,000, two will put 10,000 to mm. flight. So, if I'm, as a single person, mm. I'm chasing 1,000, mm. when I meet you, you should not go down. Hallelujah. Wow. You be on the increase. That powerful. one that's what makes a power couple. Powerful. powerful. You should be on the powerful. increase. Powerful, you know, yeah. Should be on the increase. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can as well just end it here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, um, I also wanted to add. You see, one of the things about holiness is God is the standard, and consequently, the more holy you become, mm. the more uh conscious of your limitations you will be. I mean, the limitations of flesh yeah. around you. So. It will be hard for you to see someone that is holy that is proud. 
Because God will take you to a place where you will say that, ah, I, I am only here by your mercy. All right. God will take you to a place where you know that it is not your ability that is producing the results that you have. Mm. It is the mercy of God. That is the holiness of God. So how does this apply in a relationship? In the relationship that has been set apart to God, God, don't forget, it is a personal thing first. Mm. So let's say there's something that happened between the two of you and you uh, uh, you want to report to God. This is I'm sharing my own personal experience now. I want to report to God because... I am set apart to God within that capacity. What God does is to reveal, he will just, God will just give me a mirror. And he will say, this thing which you are complaining about, this is how much more worse you do. And as a result of that, what comes out of me is just cry for mercy, personal mercy. All right, so uh, just to cap that, to summarize that, I'll say that God is the standard of holiness and God has made us holy, all right? And the more closer, the more intimate we get to God, the lesser of ourselves we see, all right? And the more of the life of God flows in us, the more of the love of God. The holiness of God is that virtue that hosts the other, uh, the other nature of God, including the love of God, all right? So the love of God is holy. Uh, the power of God is holy. The wisdom of God is holy. Why? Because anything that is given to God is set apart Absolutely. unto God. Amen. All right. So we go into why we have been talking about what holiness is. All right. And I trust that we have we have all got into that point. You know where uh, we know how to set apart. Okay. We are going to go to how. All right. But that holiness means we have been set apart unto Absolutely. God. All right. So why should we do this? Why should we do this? All right. Uh, I be one thing I, I I personally don't like is someone saying I can't do this. I can't do this. All right. Uh, why do I say that? I believe that if you have a strong reason, a reason that is strong enough, you, you will do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> For instance, let me give an example. You know, if you see, you know, if there's a let's say there's a tall fence, like mm. ah, I can't jump this. I can't jump this fence. It's too tall. If thieves come to the house, you won't know how you jump. Yeah, true. <laughs> you know, you will jump it, and at the end of the day, you wonder, how did I do this? You yeah, know? yeah. I, I, another example is, um, I'm I'm the night reader, all right. My wife is the day <laughs> reader, all right. And every time I tell her that we should walk in the night, sometimes you will be like, no, no, night is not my thing, it's day. But I can remember a particular time where. She worked for almost 48 hours. That day I was like, really? You can do this? Why? She was working on something, I think maybe a project to search work or something. And she stayed. So that it dawned on me that I really don't know the full potential of this woman of God that God has given to me. And that's another thing. When we get to why, okay, I think we are going to talk about it in the why of, um, of, of holiness, all right? One of the things that holiness does to you, all right, is to bring you into the presence of God. And in the presence of God, everything is made clear. Holiness is like light, all right? It's like, you know, it, it shines forth, all right? And things become obvious. You become obvious of your own limitations. And you become obvious of not just the limitation of others, but the capacity that is hidden beneath their weaknesses, yeah. all right? You become obvious of it, all right? And that's a beautiful thing to experience in a relationship. All right, um, okay, just because of time, uh, we'll go over to, yeah, we are saying why. So all the nature of God leads us directly to God, but each one connects us to the holiness of God. God created man in his image after his likeness to have his nature and to multiply his glory throughout the world. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right, so uh, to understand the why, we can see um, we can see it like this. I usually like using this description uh, of a cup, all right, of a vessel. Mm -hmm. We can say, I am a vessel. My wife is a vessel. Mm -hmm. Our relationship is a vessel. For instance, we are getting blessed. I hope you, they are getting blessed. All right, but I, I, I believe by faith, all right? <laughs> you are getting blessed, all right? Uh, since you are getting blessed, what is happening is 
the vessel the of our relationship of we are giving of that vessel mm -hmm. all right now for that vessel to give what is life giving mm -hmm. it has to be made holy unto god yeah all right, yeah. because it is God that fills it, yeah. and it is God that um, releases out of it. Yeah. All right. You know, Scripture talks about we being vessels. Yeah. Unto honor, there are vessels unto honor, yeah. vessels unto dishonor. So the question is, you as a vessel, which what kind of vessel are you? Hallelujah. Or your relationship, what kind of vessel is it? Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, and and the easy way to answer it, <laughs> the easy there's a, an easy way to answer that question. All right. The easy way to answer it is what is the impact oh, you yeah. have mm. on people around you? What is the impact? You see, the angels, they were just in the presence of God. Mm. And God did not tell them, hey, Angel Michael, we are going to lead the choir. Tell them to sing holy, holy, holy. Um, this is the song I want. No, I'm not sure God did that. Just by being in the presence of by God. Building. By beholding. Oh my goodness. They just covered, they covered and say holy. Holy, holy. They were provoked. So, what does your presence provoke mm, in, in people? people. Mm. What does your presence provoke in your partner in your relationship? Exactly. Yeah. And third and finally, what does your relationship provoke, provoke in people? Yeah. All right. And now, if your relationship has not been provoking anything, all right, uh, it does not mean it does not have the capacity to do that. All right. It just means we have to be intentional. All right, about setting apart mm. because every relationship has a purpose, it has an assignment. There's a dimension of God, all right, that needs to be released to the world yeah. through um, every relationship, yeah. through every family. Yeah, and when we are saying it has a purpose, you know, it's not about it's not just about oh, being a pastor or yeah or being into ministry in yeah. that sense you know it's it's between you and god to discover that personal purpose and that corporate purpose hallelujah amen amen, amen. all right so uh to to summarize that if we read second timothy 2 20 he says but in a great house they are not only vessels of gold of and, and, and of silver but also of wood and of head and some to honor and some to dishonor. I believe that great house here yeah, is talking about a, a community of believers like this, mm -hmm. all right? All right, and he's saying that amongst us, all right, amongst our relationship, there are relationships that are unto honor, all right? Uh, remember the Bible says that marriage is honorable. He said the marriage bed undefiled, mm -hmm. all right? Then he says, uh, there are some that are of gold and of silver. To be of gold means uh, to, to have allowed the fire of God to, purify to sanctify yes, you all right to to the paul says i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but at least but christ that lives in me so when you are looking at the relationship if you have a spirit lens all right and if you are looking at the person what you are seeing is a vessel of gold why because he, god god uses uses that vessel for important task right there are some there are some cups yeah. right that yeah, <laughs> yes. actually you know imagine okay you buy an expensive cup or a dish or something, you know, and it's very, very expensive. The way you use it will be different. True. You don't just use it anytime, you know. You there's a way, okay. Let's say I, I decide to buy a special cup for my husband, it's separated onto him. Don't give anybody that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's separate it, that cup will be separated onto him. And of course, I can't use the cup anyhow. I can't I can't decide to say, oh, a guest came and then I'll give the cup to someone else. No. You know, there is a way how we use it, you know. Yeah. So if you have a gold vessel, for instance, there's a way you use it. Hallelujah. You don't just throw it anyhow. You don't Hallelujah. just keep. In fact, after each use, mm. you probably repack it mm. in the box mm. and keep it. Mm. You know, you only use it on special occasions, mm. you, know? Mm. you know. So wow. the, the vessel, depending on how valuable it is, mm. determines the wow. use. And for us to even... You know, to have that kind of value, it determined, it, 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 um, it's determined by type of consecration. You got it. You know, it's determined by type of consecration. Because a gold vessel mm. has gone through a lot. Yes. It has been, and it's, it's, of course, it's not palatable. It's not yeah. like it's a palatable yeah. experience. You know, yeah. has been pruned, has been done. A lot of things has been done that to just it. to make it that beautiful. I, I, and that's why in a gathering like this, when you look at people, all right, we have to train ourselves, especially people that are, are single and um, searching. Mm -hmm. You have to train yourself to know the kind of 
material people's vessel have. Yeah. All right. And for that, for us to have that capacity, you must be a gold yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it must be a good to So a wood, gold. a wood, we see a coated wood. Ah, I said this is gold, though. This is golden cup. All right. And we enter um, one chance. All right. So, uh, uh, and uh, Mrs. B said something important. He said it is our consecration that determines uh, our, how valuable. Yes, how valuable we become. All right. So, um, so we have, in a summary, you had a vessel and your measure of consecration determines your measure of usability general use and specific use so there's a general use in the kingdom all right but then there are times where a particular family is separated for a particular purpose mm. right we saw the family of um, abraham god yeah. separated them for a particular purpose yeah. all right and we, are, uh, we saw another family uh they call them priscilla and Aquin aquilas yeah. all right uh, a, mentored yeah Paul. apollos all right they mentored apollos they were also apollos. you know they, they, that was their ministry that was like an assignment for them in that season and they hosted paul all right they hosted them within his time of sojourn all right and they even continued traveling you know with him all right so for your relationship also god has a particular purpose and you know this is this is uh why one of the reasons why personal consecration is important is let's say god calls my wife all right and she wants to answer the call of god all right do you know what we determine well how successful that ministry is will be dependent on how consecrated i am mm -hmm. so part of my assignment part of the meaning of holiness it means i have not just consecrated myself i have also consecrated my wife unto god that god she belongs to god mm -hmm. all right uh, meaning God can use a vessel to bless people mm. without me being mm. an obstacle. Mm. So every time you see, um, uh, uh, you see, I, I once heard um, um, blessed late uh, Masmuro, all right, um, saying, you know, and ministers of the ministers of the gospel always say it, all right. When they stand, they will be like, I am where I am because of my wife. I can do what I can, I'm doing because of my wife. I didn't really understand until during pregnancy <laughs> until during pregnancy and i was pastoring and sometimes all right i would have to leave my wife you know and with the needs and all that and sometimes i would i would just have to make some uh, we have to make some sacrifices as a family all right then i realized that ah this is coming from someone that has been consecrated it is a simply what was holding us up in those times is a personal consecration and nothing else and the thing is, if those consecrations are not there, when the demand comes, it can't, it can't, it can't show. And that's where uh, there's usually problem sometimes. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, we we go on. So what are the there are types of vessels? There are individual vessels. There are couple vessels. You may be dating. All right. You may be in a courtship relationship. All right. But God is seeing you as a vessel. All right, meaning even uh, within this phase of your relationship, you can still release the life of God. I mean, love umbrella, the ministry that God gave to us, it even began even while we're just normal friends, all right, with clear intention. I didn't have any any strings attached. And to tell you how 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 clean our heart is, even long after when she came to Beijing, all right, after our traditional marriage, because we had not done the church wedding. All right now, that is our own personal consecration now, as we see. Because we had not done the uh the church wedding, uh we couldn't I couldn't eat the chocolates. <laughs> All right, you know what the chocolate is? All right, because we have not done, we have not fulfilled the demands, the full demands of you know the of our consecration. All right, I couldn't touch the chocolates. All right, mm -hmm. so uh so that's just to tell us, and after after our traditional marriage, our parents have told us that you can do you can do whatever it is you do you want, all right? Because you are now husband and wife. But we know within ourselves, we only become husband and wife when <laughs> the way the way people are commenting in this place, <laughs> people we need to investigate you. All right, um, all right, um, uh, until the priest uh has given the uh, joining the approval mm -hmm. all right and we bless god for the grace and the strength it was not easy i must tell you it, it, uh, it was not easy at all at all at all at all all right um okay let's just continue <laughs> all right so uh coming to 
holiness, one of the one of the reasons why holiness is important is holiness is a requirement to see God. Holiness is a requirement to see God. And we can read from Matthew 5 8. Matthew 5 8 talks about the B attitudes. I think that was the first sermon of Jesus on the mountain, and he was telling them about the um, the attributes of a believer. All right. I mean, the attributes, the the attribute, the um, kingdom. Let's just put it kingdom attitudes. Mm -hmm. All right. And one of the ones he told them is that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see mm -hmm. God. All right. So to be holy means to uh, have a sanctified mind. All right. Such that uh, you don't allow thoughts of impurity. All right. To even linger in your now. You see, this, do you want to say something? I'm getting excited yeah, about this particular topic. Yes, I think it's important. And most people, when they say sing God, some people think, oh, it's going to heaven. Yeah. Well, not necessarily that. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it talks about how much of God you can experience. Hallelujah. How much of God you can experience. It is is determined by how much yieldedness you have to the holiness, you know, mm. process, holiness pr pruning. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, so seeing God mm -hmm. talks about how much of God Amen. you can experience, Amen, yeah. how much of God can can people get, Amen. you know, receive you. from you. you. know, we are talking about vessels, but before you can even give, mm -hmm. you know, God has to have filled you up Amen. with the vessel. Amen. And that feeling has a lot to do Amen. with holiness. Hallelujah. Wow. That's that's deep. That's deep. All right. I also wanted to add. Um, that one of the things that happens, all right, uh, uh, and personally for me, is that when when uh, when I come, okay, let's say I'm praying for my wife, mm -hmm. all right. They are, they are, they are, when somebody says they are praying for you, sometimes you have to find out what they are praying for. Don't just be satisfied that they are praying for you. <laughs> find out, okay, Esa, so what are you praying for me? All right, sometimes they may be praying their desires for you which may not necessarily be your desire mm. for yourself. Mm. All right, so let's say, for instance, the wife that is praying for the husband, that, uh, ah, God, I want my husband to be, to love me in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. I want my husband to um, to buy this kind of thing for me, to be the this, to be that. To be, all right, you can see that those kind of, I'm not saying they are bad prayers, all right, but they are prayers that are focused on, on uh, her needs, all right. So, but one of the things that happen when we sanctify our ourselves to God, all right, is the fact that uh, God corrects even your prayers. And I will tell you what I mean. All right. So there's a way I can pray for my wife. I can pray for my wife from a standpoint of things I want her to change, right, based on my observation. All right. But if I am set apart to God and God shows me a mirror and I allow myself to uh, be adjusted to that uh, new uh, phase of holiness, what happens is God shows me a higher perspective about my wife, all right, about things that she could become, not things to stop doing, all right? And I now call forth things that be not as though they were. Yeah. You see? So, you see, and that is the nature of God. That's why he actually forgets everything that has happened in the past. Immediately we got saved. The Bible says that all things have passed away. It's not as though uh, uh, God is trying to forget. It, does not, it doesn't just have the capacity mm. to remember it. And the same thing also happens when we enter into that holiness, setting apart unto God. You see, the desire to hold on to what is past, God kills it. All right, and replaces that thing with a desire for you know for glorious things ahead, mm -hmm. such that all you can say is glory, holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, uh, another thing is that holiness is a requirement. Just... Holiness is a requirement to host God. This is also one of my favorite scriptures. You see, um, pray for her to be wealthier. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's that's good. All right, a, a, an example of prayers, all right, that uh, you know is not about you. Our prayers, we find out what our needs are, all right, and pray for, you know, for God to grant a grace in those things, all right. Uh, not 
uh, prayer to be this kind of person for me or to be this for me, for me, for me, for me. Those ones are not bad, though, all right, but they are higher dimensions of prayers. And the thing is, if God, when God answers that, actually, it has a, it solves those other smaller, smaller problems that, all right, it has a pull effect. So what does it mean to host God? If you read Psalm 24, Psalm 24, verse 3 to 4, by the way, someone has been posting scripture, oh, uh, this is our wonderful, amazing doctor, me. <laughs> it's not you. Who okay. Has been posting? All right, whoever has been post, Jessica. oh, Sister Jessica, God bless you. Uh, we call we call we call that ministry mom team multimedia team in Chantun. God bless you. All right. So Psalm twenty four verse three it says, "Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord, mm-hmm. and who shall stand upon his holy mountain? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart, that has not lifted up his soul unto iniquity." So you see, clean heart, clean. He that has a clean heart and a clean hands. All right. So the heart comes, then the action, then the words. Has mm-hmm. not lifted up his soul unto iniquity, nor sworn deceitfully. All right. He shall obtain the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. So to host the blessing for a generation, all right, uh, for a family, all right, it is it is uh, it is required to uh, to to be holy, to have a clean heart and a clean hands, all right. Then, yeah, holiness keeps you humble by showing you the grace of God. Amen. Amen. All right. I think we have talked about that over and over. Over the, uh, we've talked about relationship being a ministry. All right. So God sends me to my wife. All right. To be a blessing to her. All right. And God sends her to me to be a blessing to me. All right. But it is not my responsibility to impose on her how to be a blessing to me. You see, there, there was there was a lesson that you know I saw in the life of Jesus. You know that Jesus never forced his disciples to pray, right? Mm. All right. What he was just doing was just to um to to just live his life, and it came to him that master teach us to pray. Mm. All right. Mm. And when they told him that, but the servant of these people are fasting and praying. Why are your own servant not fasting and praying? So it's not like he forced them that you guys you have been eating too much. Peter, you catch fish, you eat like fifty percent of it. We must fast for the next two weeks. That was not necessarily what he was doing, all right? Uh, of course, structure is very good and all that. But what he was doing was to uh, uh, show them the results mm-hmm. that is coming. And by their own personal desire, they came to him and asked him, Master, all right? So that could also happen in a family. That could happen in a relationship such that uh, you are not uh, monitoring the person, all right? Uh, forcing the person, all right? Uh, making the person's life a... I don't want to say a mystery, all right? But, you know, doing everything possible to, to, uh, help me. <laughs> you understand so, what I mean? Yeah, I, I understand. You're forcing the person to do what you think is appropriate. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. So, but, but one of the things that holiness does to us is to keep us humble and showing us the grace of God. And by the grace of God, we are able to share the grace of God with others. And mm-hmm. in their weaknesses, the grace of God is made available mm-hmm. to them. All right. And again, we discover our true identity in the presence of God. It is in the presence of God that we discover our identity. What is my purpose in life? What is the purpose of this relationship? What is the purpose? Where is this relationship going? How is What is the impact that it's supposed to make? All right. The more we tarry in the presence of God, the clearer those things become. Mm-hmm. All right. True. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, holiness gives you access into access into the wisdom of preservation and sustenance. Yeah, mm. I think this is actually important because we're talking about the gold vessel. Mm. You know, if I have a very expensive cup, there's a way I undo it. You know, for longer for for me to enjoy it, enjoy that particular vessel for yeah. a very, for a very long time. You know, knowing that I'm separated unto God, I'm a vessel unto all. Mm. There is a way I will live my life. Mm. You know. Having preservation in mind and sustenance. Hallelujah. Like, you know, for instance, yes, there are things I can do, people do to their body, mm-hmm. you know, at young age and in old age, they regret it, yeah. you know, because the body deteriorates mm-hmm. in a way. 
you know that's just an example mm. i'm just saying that sometimes when god said don't do this when you see it from scriptures don't do this don't do that it's not necessarily for there's him there's a wisdom behind it there's a wisdom behind it it's, true. it's, it's actually for us mm. you know for mm. us to to enjoy life and to 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 be satisfied because a lot of them can just claim that oh i'm satisfied with mm. um i'm satisfied with long life and everything but the thing is with the way you're living, mm. are you living mm. like someone who wants mm. to have a long life? Mm. You know, mm. so that's preservation is actually important, knowing that we are vessels on to mm. And you mm. know, talking about preservation, uh, two people came to mind, and uh, the two of them, their names are uh, Joseph in the Bible. Yeah. All right. They have they they have something connecting them in their experiences. All right. The first Joseph. All right. Uh, he had the opportunity to sing to sleep with Potiphar's wife. All right. But uh, because of his consciousness, yeah. all right, that he set apart unto God, all right, he said this would be a sin unto That's God, true. all right, because there are times we have the opportunities for some persons may not be necessarily to uh, to um, have sexual um, sin or something, but it is you know something that you know you 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 can do it and get and go away, get away with it, mm -hmm. all right. But because of uh, uh, um, being set apart unto God, you understand that violating this, all right, it, it has consequences. And it has consequences in the future. Yeah, and I mean, I think the, the cross of this point is the fact that God wants us to even understand the wisdom behind, behind this. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. The, the, there's, a, there's an analogy that people give, all right, that some people travel from an undeveloped country and they travel to a developed country. All right. Now, what they don't understand many times is what makes that developed country what it is, is the culture, the rule of the law and the uh, the the other. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And the uh, the the way of living mm -hmm. of the people, that's what makes it now within certain communities. All right. It is possible to still reproduce the experience. Mm -hmm of uh whichever region we are coming so let's say uh i'm from china for instance i can create a china town right even anywhere mm -hmm. whether it is in uh italy for instance if i'm from uh, uh nigeria i can create a nigerian town all i just need to do is to, to export that culture export the culture the food and everything so this is what god is saying he's saying that for us to enjoy the beauty of heaven in our relationship we need to import, we need to create an atmosphere yeah. of heaven around us. What makes heaven heaven, all right, is not just because of the beauty, all right? If God decides to leave heaven, all right, the whole thing will probably turn and change. So what sustains that atmosphere is the nature of God. So God is saying that if we can host that nature of God, we can preserve uh, whatever it is. So I will just, we just end that part by reading Deuteronomy 18.9. So these were the children of Israel when they got to the promised land, all right? So, uh, and that, again, can be uh, the journey of a relationship or anything. It says, when you have come into the land which the Lord thy God gives thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations, all right? Uh, and he went on to list out the abomination. He says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And because of this abomination, now listen to this, this is verse 12. He says, because of this abomination, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Yeah. And the last verse, the last 13 is powerful. He says, thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. And I'll give a very practical example to this. You see, uh, one of the men that I, 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 I love and respect uh, uh, is, an, is a very elderly man. I don't know uh, if he's still there. All right. Uh, going by the name. Um, Peter J. Daniels, he shared, there was a story that he shared about uh, one of his uh, of his uh, uh, grandson or something, all right, that uh, 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 had a girlfriend, all right, and the girlfriend um, and he broke up uh, with the girlfriend. And he broke up with the girlfriend, all right, and he came back home and he just pretended as though there was like mm -hmm. nothing. All right, and they get, got to hear about it, and they were like, "No, no, 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 we don't do like this in our family." All right, we don't uh, break people's hearts within our family. The covenant 
all right our culture it is not in our culture all right because if we have this kind of culture there's a life that it produces and that is not the life that we have submitted to as a family so they had to call things all right and ensure that things were set straight things were done the way apologizing and things were done in the way they should do now coming back to the new testament there was a man also joseph remember yeah. you gave the example of joseph yeah jo joseph you know joseph who at that point wanted to marry mary yes you know scripture said they were espoused and imagine mary just saying i'm pregnant yeah you know it's something he had all the rights yeah. to call her out and say, Oh, this lady cheated on me. To drag her on Twitter. To <laughs> you know, this lady cheated on me and everything, you know. But scripture talks about how he went to, for the fact that he even thought about it, first of Amen. all, you know, he had to take some time to think about it, mm -hmm. you know. And he concluded in his heart that, no, being a just man mm -hmm. is going to. You know, um, separate her quietly. Mm -hmm. I'm not using the exact word mm -hmm. now. You know, but he wanted to do it in private mm -hmm. and not making it public. Mm -hmm. It was when he was deliberating it in his heart that was when the angel, angel showed up. Yeah. Can you see? So he was able to host the presence of the angel. Why? Because he had a heart that was set apart. Mm -hmm. All right. So and that could happen in a relationship the person might be doing something wrong all right do you desire to teach that person a lesson or do you desire that ah this thing i have done i will show you i will show you my true color what's your true color <laughs> sorry to as okay say, camellia show us your true color <laughs> all right so our true color is the color of god yeah. all right if you show our true color that's holiness right mm -hmm. yeah so uh um uh, uh that that could happen that could happen in between husband and wife, it could happen even they were not even married yet, mm. right? Well, the different school of so but to what scripture says was were they in spouse. They were spouse, they were yeah. maybe dating or cutting. Yeah. I think they were cutting. That's my, my that's my <laughs> personal thought. All right. So um the we move over now to practical tips, tips yeah. on how to um how to what to do, you know, to promote holiness in your relationship. In your relationship. Yeah. All right, but I want to be sure people are still following. If you are following or if you are getting blessed, just drop a love emoji, fire emoji, uh, drop a, an emoji that describes your feeling. Yeah. <laughs> if you drop love, it means you are currently in love. All right. Ah, the person that is crying, don't cry now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Ah, people are in love, yo. Ah, Jinhua. Jinhua City is in. Is we 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 have to double up in Chanchun. <laughs> all right, all right, so all right. Much love. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, now we're going to practical tips. So perhaps in a relationship, you are thinking, uh, what are those things that you need to do? Yeah. All right, to um get to that point of you know uh. Um, of saying, well, my relationship is only is only. <laughs> my relationship is set apart unto God. Yeah. All right. So uh, it begins first of all. Uh, by understanding that we have, I've talked about, we've talked about a relationship being like a vessel. All yeah. right. Another thing now is understanding that your relationship is also like a garden. A garden. Yeah. All right. It's like a garden. So all right. Really and what this, what determines the beauty of every garden is the wisdom of the gardener. Yeah. Right. So uh, you see some gardens. It was beautiful before it was given to a gardener. <laughs> And the gardener did not water it, did not, it turned to something else, all right? So that's why sometimes you see some women that have potential. You see, so sometimes when I'm praying, I'm just asking God, that God, help me to be a better gardener. Help me to be a better gardener, all right? That in five years' time, in 10 years' time, I want to know that I've, I've done what, you know, all that you want me to do for my wife, all right? And I believe that's also a prayer for me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, so... um. Uh, so the, 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 to be a, a proper gardener, the first thing is to submit to the wisdom of the, of God. Mm -hmm. All right. Because, uh, there was a, another revelation about gardens, you know, that God gave me. All right. That she is a garden, I am a garden. All right. And I am a steward or a steward gardener for God in a garden. Mm -hmm. So it is my responsibility to decorate that garden. 
not as I want. As God wants. As God wants. Yeah. All right. So that means I'm partnering with God, all right, to decorate her, all right? And that includes um, probably praying, loving her. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.25 that husband love your wife as Christ loved the church. So Christ has shown us a model mm -hmm. on some of those things, all right? Then uh, we go on. Uh, and also then, if you read First Thessalonians 5.18, it talks about uh, 23. It says, uh, sanctify yourself wholly. It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. So those are three dimensions of sanctification. Those are three dimensions of being set apart. Mm -hmm. The first part is, you know, spiritual uh, sanctification. And that comes... All right, by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I am assuming everybody, we are assuming everybody here uh, has, you know, gone through that you have accepted Jesus Christ. If you have not done that, all right, the Bible says that do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. All right, uh, while you can admire the culture of love from unbeliever, they don't have the nature of it. All right. They don't have the nature that sustains sure. that. All right. Uh, and as a result, it can change overnight. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't afford to marry an unbeliever. Exactly. Even if they are nice. Exactly. All right. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe maybe you should talk a little about that. Let me see the time. Uh, I wanted us to end in 10 minutes so that we can take questions. Uh, Mr. Let me just get a feedback from Mr. Uh, Big Brother Terry. Big Brother Terry, how are we doing with time? <laughs> Um, I think we're on time. We're on time. We can we can go on, sir. All right. All right. But we should pause for questions, right? Yes, we can do so. We can do so. All right. All right. So uh, I'll, let me just say that if anyone has a question, uh, you can either drop it or uh, send it to uh, Big Brother Pastor Terry. All right. So um, uh, we we go over to a sanctification of the spirit, we are done with sanctification of the spirit, accepting Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. And I remember saying that uh, uh, it is going to be important. First of all, your purpose is in God. And if the person does not have the nature of God, mm -hmm. you cannot communicate on certain things. You don't have the same nature. Yeah. Imagine, I, I see, I see, I hope, I hope maybe there are people also like that here. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to, to sound somehow, all right? But sometimes we try to love animals, right? We wear clothes for them. We wear clothes for the dog, for the cat, all right? And sometimes uh, people, some may even give them their names, all right? Some even transfer their inheritance, you know, to them, all right? But after all that, we all still know that the animals. they are the animals, all right? That the, uh, our life, I mean, they, 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 they cannot... All right, they cannot host, you know, uh, uh, our identity. We cannot communicate with them the way we communicate. With other human beings. Yes, all right. So the same thing happens, all right, uh, between believers, all right, and unbelievers. There's a limit of communication that we stop to make sense, all right? And in important matters of destiny, all right, there are uh, some communications that are important, all right? In fact, there are times where... Uh, uh, Maybe God wants me to do something, all right? And I know if I tell my wife, she may not uh, probably want to uh, easily agree. All I would just do is go, tell God to speak with her. And in a time of prayer, God would just directly communicate with her. And she asked her, ah, this makes sense. I'll say, wow, 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 all right? But it is easy mm -hmm. for God to communicate that with her. But if it is someone that has been even rejecting God, entrance to into his heart to even hear God will yeah. be difficult all right and we are going to go through marriage in the journey of marriage you're going to go through many many seasons where you are going to need to partner together sure. as husband and wife all right or as uh as as one all right to agree on certain things all right yeah. then so uh so that's about our spiritual uh sanctification. sanctification then we come to sanctification of the soul all right, it says, the God of peace sanctify you only, all right, uh, um, uh, spirit, soul, and body. So when we talk about the soul, we're talking about both the mind, the will, and the emotions, all right? Uh, one of the things that comes, uh, the mind is, 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 is really, really, really important, all right? Because as a man thinks, 
in his heart. So is he. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, our minds eventually determine our level of purity because it, it, it influences our actions. Right? It influences uh, our, our consecration. It influences our decisions. All right. So one of the things we want to do is to ensure uh, we program our mind the mm -hmm. way we want to think. Mm -hmm. You know, scripture talks about renewing our mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we take deliberate action, deliberate steps to program our mind to think in a certain way, in ways consistent with the uh, the the nature of God. Remember, the holiness of God is the nature of God. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's a way of thinking that is inconsistent with the nature of God. So from time to time, we ask ourselves, all right, uh, uh, this way I'm thinking about this person, is it consistent with the nature of God? All right. And, and, and personally, I think one thing that we do is to take our confessions and affirmations really seriously. All right. Why? Because uh, 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 it says this book of the Lord shall not depart out of, your, out of your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night. All right. In other words, as you are saying it, it becomes a part of your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind eventually becomes what you do. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, uh, that's one of the ways we renew our mind and we bring ourselves into uh, obedience, easy obedience. All right. Mm -hmm. Then another way is sanctification of the will. All right. We, we heard what uh, Paul said. Uh, he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. So I believe that God would have us get to a place, you know, where our decisions, even if it is hard to do it, but God knows that we will still seek him for grace mm. to do it. All right. Personally, I don't want to get to a place, you know, where I will say that, ah, God, I cannot do this. Thing. I, no, 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 I cannot. All I would just want to say is, no matter what it is that God wants me to do, I have the desire to please God. It is difficult, but I believe that God can give me grace for it. All right, so now there's a difference between the two kinds of prayer. One prayer has already defined the scope of submission. Yeah. You see, as far as this thing is concerned, though, uh, <laughs> while the other person is saying that, God, this is hard, and we can see that that was the prayer of Jesus. He said, not my will, but your will be done. He said, if this cup uh, if possible, this cup should be removed. It should be taken. Mm -hmm. He said, however, not my will, but your will be done. And he traveled there in prayer for long. All right. So um, that's that's sanctification of the will. So the more you consecrate your will, and you see, the kind of suggestions, the kind of thought, the kind of instructions that God will be giving to you now are going to be things that are important there. You see, consecration, that's a golden consecration. Mm -hmm. All right. And what will determine the distance between you and the places, you know, the impact that God will have us make is now how long it takes you to actually consecrate your will. Because it is in the doing that the action actually is. Yeah. It is in the doing that the action actually is. It says faith without works is dead. All right. So with faith, the consecration does not stay in the mind. All right. What you do is a function of the conclusion. The Bible says that when Abraham was fully persuaded, all right, that God is able to do that which he has altered. So there are certain things that you, you will start doing, all right, in your relation when you become fully persuaded of, you know, the nature of God and your, your submission to the wisdom of God. Amen. All right. So another is now a sanctification of your emotions. Ha, this part is uh, is a bit interesting. All right. Because many times we don't understand uh, some of our emotions. All right. God gave us the emotions, but the emotions is at an interception between the spirit and the flesh. Yeah. Such that unless we allow ourselves to be consecrated, to consecrate our emotions, it will be difficult to know when your flesh is talking to you or when your spirit is talking to you. And this is what I mean. There are times where God gives you a burden for your partner, all right? And at those times, all right, you just become hypersensitive to things that they do. <laughs> yeah, so we may call it irritation. You become easily irritated about things that they do, all right? On, 
However, that emotion has been wrongly uh, decoded. decoded. Yeah. Because that emotion is just saying that this person, yeah. at this time, he needs your help. All right? And instead of responding like this, this is what you should do. Maybe you should just need to pray for them because there's something somewhere that is coming. All right? Either directly to them or indirectly to them. All right? Some ministers that work in healing, all right? For instance, they understand that uh, their body is like the temple of God. Mm. All right? And sometimes when God wants to heal someone, all right, they can feel the pain of the infirmity of that person. Mm. All right? So that is maybe they understand that if I'm feeling um, a pain in my neck, it means there's someone that has the pain in the neck. And as they are rebooking that thing in themselves, as they are rebooking that thing in themselves, they understand that that pain is being lifted Definitely. of that person. Yeah. All right. So why? Because our body is the temple of God. And in the realm of the spirit, we are all the body of Christ. We are all connected. So the feeling of the infirmity of one person can be felt by another person. All right. Because he can be touched mm. by the feeling of our infirmity. Mm. And we are connected together. So we need also to consecrate our emotions yeah yeah for correct interpretation all right yes all right so and that brings us again to the mind because it is the mind that is you know coding and decoding all these things it's the mind that decides what this feeling is all right uh so one of the ways we do that all right is by uh uh allowing the law of the spirits all right constantly saying to yourself that i am in charge of my emotions. I'm not moved by my emotions. I'm not moved by how I feel. I'm not moved by what I feel like doing. All right. There are times where you feel like doing what is wrong in your relationship. All right. But you also have to understand that at those times, those may be entry points of divine instructions that can take your relationship to the next level. All right. So that may be a time. Have you noticed that? Um, uh, have you noticed that sometimes when angels are about to come, that's when you feel like sleeping? <laughs> but unfortunately, we don't know. The angels don't announce to us, so we don't even know when they are coming or not. And sometimes it's when a big miracle is about to happen, you know, that uh, 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 the emotions, you know, starts uh, coming. So the last point here, of course, is sanctification of the body. All right. And I also believe that part of sanctification of the emotion is also fleeing every appearance of, of evil, evil and setting necessary boundaries so that you won't steer. It says uh, King Solomon. Even though he, he played around, but he said, do not awake love yeah. until it is, time. it is time. All right. Uh, now, don't stay yourself up until lost. Exactly. All right. So it is important we set necessary boundaries. All right. I think I think we need to play a lot. <laughs> this part, Mrs. V likes this part. She's, she has a few yeah. parts. <laughs> I think we need to dwell on this, you know, especially and fleeing every appearances of, of evil, you know. Um, it's it's for instance looking at Joseph. Mm. We, we talked about Joseph, who Potiphar was trying, Potiphar's wife was trying to seduce. You know, instead of him trying to figure it out, what did he do? He fled mm. because some people just feel, well, I have the ability, I can pray in tongues. How about that? You yeah. know, I can pray. It's fire. Tongues. They are doing. Ka -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> ka -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> I can pray in tongues. I can overcome this. You know. No, as far as when it comes to walking, let, let me put it in the appropriate word. When it comes to walking in sexual purity, you know, it's necessary to flee because we are not log of wood. We are human beings True. in flesh, True. you know, you need to run, mm. you know. So, and then also even the company of people or friends you have, you know, can either stir you up. Mm. to do the right thing you know stay you up to do the right thing or stay you up on to ungodliness mm. you know, if you if you have a company of people who talk about their sexual escapades you know even if you are the earliest brother at some point mm. you know you think about it yeah. and it starts from the mind you know yeah. you start nurturing those thoughts in yeah. your mind you know but as far as sexual purposes flee flee you, yeah. know, you know what you see you know talk, so scripture talks about um mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes you know the pride of life you know all those things flee it's mm -hmm. very 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 important mm -hmm. and i also wanted to mention on thinking on things that is you know scripture also talks about that pure, uh, pure excellence or good report yeah. all those things you know because you, you draw the, you draw a lot on the mind and i think it's very very important mm -hmm. Mm. Because 
in 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 the body of Christ, a lot of time people suffer in silence. Mm. In the sense that they look they look like the ideal Christians, mm. but a lot is going on in them. Mm. A lot is going on in them. A lot is going on in them. The body is playing, the mind is dead. Yeah, a lot is going on. And it's it's really, really important that we consecrate our mind unto God mm. such that we constantly meditate on the word. You know, you mm. constantly meditate on things that are of good reports, constantly meditate on, on those things that way, such that when they wake you up from mm. your sleep, mm. those are the things that mm. in your subconsciousness, you mm. know. You are thinking the word, you're talking the word, you're walking the word. Mm. You know, it's really, really important. Mm. The mind is because it's 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 easy to cover. It's really easy to cover those things and just show up, show showcase the works, mm. you know, mm. showcase the work and yet the mind needs help. Mm. And, and you see, uh again, this brings us to why, all right, the wisdom of uh holiness the wisdom of you know um cleaning your mind for instance if you are here you know you have a an issue with uh, pornography yeah. you have an issue with uh, addiction the truth is you are losing more than you know yeah all right why uh because there's a portion of your heart that those things have filled and they have locked that that portion can be the portion that you need all right, for to hear God concerning important aspects yeah. of life. And those things, what happens is they have control over the person. In other words, the person can be in church, all right? They say, lift up holy hands, all right? And the word of God is about to come forth. They, they just control it. They just say, pain. They just send the image of the picture. You just <laughs> see the image, you see all right? Yeah, immediately you see that. You just, the, all the angels around you, you just, they just moved. Away. And what is this alarm they, they can't stay in this environment mm. all right so you see so people like that and it's not just um sexual immorality all right uh anything like that we even lose... anger yes even things like because you know for instance if we have an argument yeah and i probably i keep quiet the place the devil we attack first is the mind you're thinking you're not even thinking of any good thing yeah you are thinking of, ah, no, you did this. No, we did that. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And then you start building it up. You are boiling yeah. in your yeah. heart. Yeah. You know? The mind is very, very yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and our mind, you see, if we, our, our thoughts are releasing like things like waves, all right? Yeah. Uh, the Bible says that the angels of the Lord, they encamp around those that fear him. Now, fearing God is not an action thing is a thing of the mind. Yeah. In other words, your thoughts is releasing some uh, radiation that determines the kind of environment, the atmosphere you host. Mm. All right. So a man, I don't know if you should go into this. All right. A man that constantly exposes himself to immorality, mm. what happens is he's releasing some thoughts around him. Mm. All right. And is you know, uh, 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 at the end of the day, creating an atmosphere mm -hmm. where the spirit, the spiritual version of that thing, the spirit behind those things, so it it's moves from life, yeah. it moves from an action into an habit, into an addiction, and when it becomes an addiction, now it now becomes demonic, yeah. all right. And what happens is many times, many of those demonic things, all right, uh, they become easily transferred, mm -hmm. all right. I mean, they become easily transferred even within the environment because the atmosphere is now saturated by it. Yeah. All right. So uh but to of course we are not saying all this to scare anybody. All right. We are saying this that it is important we set structures for our mind. And that structure be it, there are two parts of the structure. There's the part where you have something to do, then there's the part that God has something to do. All right. God's part, all right, is in giving you grace. God's part is in giving you his word, all right, to clean you by his word. While our home part is both in confessing the words, all right, and setting forth necessary structures, all right. What kind of structures? If you know you have your phone, all right, and you have some websites, you know that uh, 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 that uh, uh, they, they arose unnecessary desires in you. First of all, if you need to format your phone, you say if your if your left eye is making you to sin, you cut it. If the Bible is saying you cut off your left, is it iPhone that you not? Uh, <laughs> All right, maybe you sew it and buy. Uh, okay, all right. Then another thing that we can do, all right, is to be accountable, having accountability. 
all right you can you can you can uh i remember when we were dating all right uh we prefer to use the word cutting anyway yeah. when we're cutting all right there are times where we have to report ourselves to ourselves right that this is what i've done or this is what i've done or. and even report ourselves to mentors yeah and report to mentors also of course it's not every everything that you say they say ah Come and see what uh, <laughs> is my brother all right. Oh, no, it's at the point where you need help, all right. Okay, so there are different levels of accountability. There's personal accountability, and you have to know, of course, if there are somebody is reporting to you, all right, that this is what I've done. You say, eh, you did this. Oh no, 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 no. This is the end of ah no, 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 no. This is the end of. Of course, we have to understand that it is a call for help, mm-hmm. all right. It is a call for assistance, depending on the genuity of the person, mm-hmm. all right, all right, and know when uh when it is not you that can help that person, right? If the person says he's struggling with loss, they say, oh, no, let's let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. <laughs> and you are alone in the dark, holding hands and praying with somebody that's struggling with <laughs> loss. Uh, what happens? What? Okay, I don't even want to, <laughs> I, I don't want to think about what will happen next. All right, so uh, what is important is at such point, you involve someone. And when you are involving someone, as uh, someone that uh, has, has proven records, all right, mm-hmm. uh, someone that has proven records, all right, uh, you are accountable to such people, all right. Uh, I think that's probably where yeah, we Yeah, I think can. we can call for questions. Yeah. So, family, we hope with these few points of ours, yeah, big brother. So, uh, I have some few questions on my side. I will ask, and then I think our MC will also have some questions. Okay, so the first one is, how do we resolve conflicts in dating? I don't know. Should I bring all the questions or I do it one one? How many questions, first of all? <laughs> from from my side, I have three questions. Okay. Well, we can know how to manage the time. I think we can do it one by one. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So how do we resolve conflicts in dating? Uh, well, um, one of the things we we did when we were cutting. Oh, well, we had conflicts too. So. Yeah, we did. You know, was that we concluded that a uh, point a uh, point of agreement to be going will be God's word. You know, because we can't avoid conflict in the sense that we have different backgrounds. You know, we have different upbringings. The way, in, for, for the fact that we are even of different gender, you yeah. know, it will create some kind of disagreement, mm-hmm. you know. But we decided that our point of agreement will be God's point. Point. Our meeting point will be God's word. Mm-hmm. You know? So after all the, if, in fact, to even avoid too much argument, it's usually better to say, okay, what God, what does God's word say about this? Yeah. You know, instead of going through the, um, others of oh we are hugging we are going back and forth and then we now only realize that oh what did God word say no it should be the first thing on our heart mm. that oh yes we should consider God's word first yeah. before we go through the you know the others of arguing yeah. and conflicting that's, and that's beautiful yeah. that's beautiful but I must also add there are times where it's God's not word easy. God's word has not said like <laughs> anything for instance. Uh, how many child do you want to give birth to, or where do you want to settle down as a family? Is it in this place or in this place? All right, or uh, maybe giving out something, mm. all right, to so so person, or cutting off your relationship with this person. God, well, where? God, what? God, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> let's talk about. Let's talk about. Let's talk about number of children. Oh, and okay. I'm saying that because this affected us. This is a conflict that has been partially resolved. <laughs> but it's no longer a problem. It used to be a problem, all right? And this would be my perspective about that, all right? So depending on the conflict, all right, if it is something that violates the integrity of God's word, mm-hmm. all right, as uh, if you are not married, mm-hmm. all right, I think it is something that is important, all right? You may want to sit about it and talk about it, that this violates the integrity of God's word. All right, let's take for instance, somebody is asking you to maybe um to violate your body, mm-hmm. all right, and uh you are having conflict. I'm not even sure why you are having, having even having conflict about that, all right? But if it's not something that is violating God's word, all right, but it's just something about personal interest, a personal and that comes up a lot. All right. So what happens is again you check if it is something that uh is a that has a reference point in God's word. And, and not not necessarily a reference point now. You check about the um, the consequence of not doing that thing. 
Mm. All right. Is this something that threatens your assignment? Right. For instance, the number of children that we give it to, if you give it to five, you give it to one, you give it to ten, it doesn't affect, it doesn't change my personal, my personal purpose, my personal assignment. Mm. All right. So is this something that I can sacrifice for? Mm. Because amongst two of you, there will always be someone that can sacrifice in every instance. Mm. So where this issue now is, when both parties say that no, I no agree, I do not agree, all right? So we, you want to ask if it is something that, and for every sacrifice of love that you make, what happens is there's a grace because it's, a, it's an act of humility, all right? And sometimes the person, I can't tell you how many times we have disagreed on something, and my wife will eventually come and not just do that thing, but even do more than even the thing that I was asking for. All right, so it is like God paying you back in multiple food for that thing. All right, I hope. Yeah. And, and again, accountability, maybe having a mental. Yeah, yeah. Practice. When it comes to, when it comes to a point that you see that oh, you guys are not coming, to, you are not agreeing at all. You know, it's 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 usually advisable to call a third party who you, who you are both accountable. To. And and so that means in the relationship you have to. Both mutually agree that uh, we are submitting to the wisdom yeah. of God through, through this, this person. person. At some point, we can yeah. see the person's advice. There's nothing wrong. I hear big, our biggest brother, Chairman Perry, you know, telling saying that almost two or three times in a year, him yeah. and Mama, they go out for counseling. I was like, wow, ah, that's, you know, uh, yeah. we need to learn from that. It's important. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So the next question I have is, in the presentation, you mentioned God gives partners, please. How do I know that this sister is mine? Or how do I hear from God? Hmm. Wahala. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because of reasons like this that we started recording this. Because I remember when I said that, I quickly added something else. Right, but do you want to respond to that? Well, in hearing How from did God, you hear from God? Wait, see. <laughs> or were you swayed away by the glory? <laughs> in hearing from God, it shouldn't just start from well, when, I, when I'm looking for a partner, you yeah. know, when I need a wife. When I, There should be a track record of, yeah. oh, God has been leading me in this. God has been leading me in that, you know. So that track record is important because we see people that when it's time for marriage, that's when they start asking, oh God, is she the one, speak is he the me. one, speak to me, speak to me, and you start putting much pressure on God, you know, so that consistent walk with God is actually important, you know, such that it comes easy, so you would have, you would, you know, scripture says, my sheep hear my voice, mm. you know, you will already have a way you hear God, mm. yeah. you know, for well, most people say the best way God leads, which yeah. I agree with, is um peace in your heart, yeah. you know. But a lot of people can interpret peace in your heart different ways if mm. you don't have a track record mm. with God. That's the truth. Mm. But if you have a walk with God, that peace in your heart, you will know when it comes. True. You know, so that first of all, the track record in hearing God is important, and then um having a particular way in which you hear God, you know, knowing how God speaks to you, I think mm -hmm. that's the right word. Mm -hmm. A track record in hearing God and knowing how God speaks to you. Mm -hmm. Does God speak to you literally from the from His word? Mm -hmm. And you hear, you, you know, you you hear Him, and maybe probably you're going through something, and God, and then if, if, what the word of God pops up in your heart, mm -hmm. you know, okay, this is God speaking to you. So when it comes to the point of oh, I need a partner, God will use that same method to speak mm -hmm. with you. God won't go outside. You know, that method mm. for you if it's oh you just have this peace undeniable peace in your heart mm. god will use that same method to speak mm. with you yeah. yeah yeah and to to just add a little bit of practicality also to it all right um there are different stages of intimacy all right with god. not with god now with man i mean oh. when you're working with god you know sometimes and i think this is why a lot of people delay even in finding the right one, because they are expecting God to speak in a particular way, mm -hmm. all right? So there's a phase where uh, God brings you to a garden, all right? And you, by garden now, I mean to a community of people, yeah. all right? And you get to meet a lot of people, all right? So this stage is more like an observation stage, all right? There you see people that you admire from afar, all right? But you get closer to them, 
And you see that. Mm -mm. And now, of course, following the, the doctrine of God's word, do not be unequally yoked. So we have met people, different people that you can be equally yoked together with them. Mm -hmm. All right. But we are now ob at the observation stage. All right. Observation stage is even from afar, you know the people that you like and the people that you don't like. All right. You know the people that uh, have something. It seems like there's something like it, there has to be an attraction. All right. I mean, there has to be an attraction. I know we always talk about maybe chemistry not being there and all that. All right. But there has to be either a a, a something that is drawing you to them or it's something that. Intellect. Oh, I just like the way this person speaks. Exactly. And God will tell, try to point point to you that it's not just about the way they speak. Yeah. You know, probably they will be your wife. You know, and yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah. So, so one of the things God does is to again illumination, holiness. So one of the things God does. As you draw closer to him, is to illuminate things to you. So you can just the same. In fact, that was one of the things concerning my wife. She's the same um only sister that I've known, only friend that I've known for a long time. But it got to a stage where I just started seeing her in a different light. I, and I was like, what's happening to me? Why am I just thinking about this person morning, afternoon, and night? And the desire to just, you know, uh spend time and and speak with her, all right, you know, started increasing at that time. All right. And I put it through different shades. All right. And it, I, it stayed there. So sometimes you want to know if it's a temporal feeling or is it. And I remember telling one of my friends then that, ah, that I found the person. You know, and the person gave me a very good word. He said, OK, we need to be sure if it is uh, just a, a lost my heart. Yes, Sister Joy, it's just my heart that is doing that. Or if it is um, if it is something that can uh, 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 meet, you know, uh, stand, the test of stand the test of time. All right, so we went through that period of time. All right, so that from that observation phase, you know the people that uh, you probably have a liking for, all right? Then they, now is a talking phase, all right, where you now get to talk with people, all right? Uh, this has nothing to do with relationship at all yet, all right? So you are just talking because it is when you are talking with people that you know how people think, all right? And I usually encourage that the talking phase, all right, to uh, probably be a phase where uh, you see the person do certain things, all right? Uh, you may think, so how many of us, sometimes you think you like somebody, all right, but uh, you just see something about, ah, you say, oh, hmm, I don't like this person. <laughs> and all those love, we just turn to something else. You don't want to see the person again. You don't want, why? Because you have seen something about the person that is unpleasant, all right? So it is in the talking stage that you know the people that can move to the next uh, phase, all right? So, and it's in that talking phase that you know you develop friendships. So one of the things that also happen again is people have poor abilities to build true friends mm -hmm. all right so because our uh, brothers are just interested in relationship everybody that comes they are haunting the person down you see this is, can i marry can i marry no just be good friends with people just invest in them be a good friend add yeah. values to them all right as you are adding value you see the persons that honor your value you see the person that when they are talking the babies in your womb live like um like mary and elizabeth all right. There are some people that when they are talking around you, they demoralize you. They demoralize you. You you feel like doing some things that you you remember presence that we talked about. Yeah. What happens when you are in the presence of this person? All right. So, but there are some other persons. All right. All your dreams just come to life. You feel like going like David, going to kill Goliath, going and running after lions after speaking to them because faith is built. Faith comes there. Yeah. Their presence instills faith in you, confidence in you. You know, and there's the joy. You know that also comes in you. So. Uh, of course, it's not everybody that does that, mm -hmm. that may fall in that category, all right? Now, that is when you are now praying that amongst this, Lord, what yeah. you get, all right? So, I know it is easier for brothers, all right? But uh, even for sisters, I can tell you that it is even much more easier, right? Yeah, I wanted to also add that every, nobody is perfect because you're talking about or you see something you don't like and say, hey, no, me, I can't. Of course not. <laughs> nobody yeah. is perfect, you know, but you should be able to rec recognize your non-negotiables. Yes. You know, based on oh, your personal purpose and stuff, you yeah. know, oh, I can't work with this person because yeah. it's a non-negotiable for yeah. me. Yeah. All right. So that means you have to understand yourself as well. Yeah. Yeah, so over to you, sir. Thank you very much. So, now you know we we are in a place where if you are not careful, you you become the person's friend who friends only. Yeah, you know, that's the fear. Hmm. Yes, that's why people shoot their shot fast. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, are right. Yeah, yes, you're you're right, sir. Um, yes, I I personally too don't like the idea of friend zoning people. So there should be um like a time limit 
yeah. a time limit you know for, well before we even started cutting yeah you know i remember that he was always calling and everything and our mentors has told us then that see if a brother is standing staying around you and is not making his intention no yeah. you know voice out so he's not just blocking every other brother from coming yeah you know, so I had to, of course, to tell my mentors. And at a point, I even told him with wisdom that I don't understand all these calls. What's yeah. going on? You yeah. know, of course, with wisdom, don't just call people out anyhow, you know, with wisdom. You know, so there should be a time limit. And then as the la- as but I think it's the sisters that are guilty of this friends or anything. Both gender, exactly. Both. Oh, the sisters is the... Even so, the men, there's even a level of church, men, men, church brothers, I don't brothers now. Brothers don't. Brothers are the ones that are uh, <laughs> are suffering. Uh, are victims of are suffering. Yes. 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 <laughs> brothers are even church I, brothers. I got, back, I got to back. But but really, it's really, serious. Really, I don't think I don't think it's really necessary. All right. <laughs> yes. If you know if you know you are not ready for a particular relationship. All right. Just let the person know. All right. Yeah. Uh, because uh. There are some brothers that they come with right intentions and they, they can already see the future. They mm-hmm. know exactly. They, some of them even know the wedding day. They bought the wedding suit. Mm-hmm. Right? All that is just remaining is just, you know, the acceptance and, you know, everything we follow suit, all right? So, My sister is now friendzoning. Yeah, so friendzoning, I think, is a... Uh, is, 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 I don't think it's a good thing. Let me just put it that way. Yeah, it's not Christ-like to friendzone people. I yeah. mean, yes, it's not because... It's like playing with people's emotion. You, you know? know this person is interested. Mm. And you know you're not going to say yes at the end of the and day. And you're just keeping All the right. person. And you're keeping the person, making the person feel uh, uh, maybe they stand a chance. All right. So I don't think it is something that should be encouraged. It's not fair. If you know you're staying in a waiting <laughs> period, all right, uh, and you know sincerely to yourself that that may take a time, mm. you can tell the person that it will still take me a particular time all right mm. uh if you can wait very good but if you can't wait i will encourage you to move on all right and to... if any other person should yes. come around yes don't feel jealous yeah all right sir uh, i hope i hope the okay, brother so... <laughs> yeah so it takes me to my 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 next question then he says how long should how how long should before date what yeah how long should you date before you get married as in ideal duration of dating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think um it's there's no one way answer to it. True. You know, it's it's all depends on your life stage, for instance. Yes, and then even the level of maturity. Yeah. You know, maturity in terms of spiritual, emotional, um, physical, of course, physical, you should have gotten to a certain yeah. age, you know. Um um, intellect wise, you and know, preparation and too. preparation as well, you know. If you are from Zimbabwe and you know Lubona is not ready, <laughs> <laughs> is it Lubona or Lubola? I one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think me, I, I like to, I like to say, I like to use the idea of maturity stage. You know, if the person, people say within six months, yeah, three to six months, you know. But it still boils down to, is the person prepared spiritually? Yeah. Is the person prepared emotionally? Yeah. Is, is it the kind of person that is, oh, maybe is a mommy's boy and everything he does, mommy decides. Yeah. You know, how will he make decisions for the family? Yeah. You know, is, is spiritually, when when situations come, you know, can the person be able to stand and say, okay, let's, let's decree, you know, yeah. let's pray. Yeah. And the person is not fidgeting, yeah. you know, in terms of level of faith, you yeah. know. You, and then even intellect-wise, yeah. you know, can the person make sound decision for yeah. the family? Yeah. So all those things are, are checks we can. So if if probably the person needs to grow in certain area, yeah. it determines how long, yeah. you know, you now go court to get married yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. That's that's true. That's true. Uh, I would just uh, also add the fact of the life stage is really important because sometimes people are in different life stages, mm-hmm. all right? Sometimes uh, they, they are just starting, let's say they are in um, master's, for instance, or they are in undergraduate, mm-hmm. right? And they are now sure. Right? But one thing I would say is don't enter into a romantic relationship if you are not Ready to get planning married. for marriage. Yeah. All right. Just keep it in the talking stage, all right? But don't commit someone. And it's part of holiness. That's one of the things we're saying, all right, uh, that you don't, you don't play with the emotions of a sister. 
uh, we didn't talk about that, right? Don't play with the emotions of a brother. It is wrong. It is a sin. Let me just put it that way. Mm. It is a sin to play with the emotions of someone, all right, when you know you are not. As believers, it is for us. Why? Because that person is also a child of God. The the Bible says that we treat the the brothers, all right, um, the the, the younger women as our sisters, right? So we are seeing them also as the daughter of God. So I can't just mess with their emotions anyhow. You can't just mess with their bodies anyhow because it belongs to God. All right. So uh don't don't start don't do don't if the relationship if the relationship is not going towards marriage, all right, then you are not ready. All right, you are ready if you know that you can you are now if God says all things are equal, you are ready to say I do. All right. Mm. Oh, that that is it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, over to you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. And I think this, yeah, this question is from, um, it says, it's, just, it's a twin one question. Please, what's your take on cohabitation among youths, that is believers? And then, two, <laughs> the Bible says we should not be equally yoked with non-believers. My question is, who is a non-believer? Well, we can start from the, the previous question, the second question. Who is a non-believer? Anyone, um, Romans 10, 9 talks about we confessing the Lordship of Jesus, you know, and believing in our hearts that Christ, that God raised him from the dead. Mm. Anyone who hasn't taken that step, you know, is a non-believer. Who is not submitted to the Lordship of Jesus mm. is a non-believer, mm. you know. So what you look out for is, is this person submitted to the Lordship of Jesus in terms of who oh, I've confessed that Jesus is Lord, and then also bearing the fruits, mm. you know. Of course, we are all in, we are all growing in mm. that sense. But then there should also be a track record of, oh, this person is in the fold and yet also bearing the fruits mm. of Christ, True. fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. yeah. And then I think... And can... for the aspect of cohabitation, <laughs> uh, they say we should not give any room for uh there's one of those verses that i read all right but it says we should not give any room for temptation Mm -hmm. if you ask me for my yes or no answer it is a no Mm -hmm. all right and the reason is and i'll i'll I'll, I'll tell you one of the reasons you know i was saying that my my wife and i all right we we were uh, married as far as our parents were concerned now we are not using our life as a template i'm just using it as a conviction now Mm -hmm. all right uh it got to a point where uh at that point we just wanted to be in our room but we won't do anything mm. all right and of course with all uh sincerity maturity we could do that all right mm. uh but then uh personally i was seeking the advice all right of uh people that i was accountable to and one of the responses i got at that time is all right what would be uh the thoughts yeah, of people others. that are looking all right so you see our allegiance is to god but then we are also committed to what happens to others. Yes. You see, the Bible says that it is better for somebody to have a, a, a stone around his neck and thrown into the river than to cause his brother to fall into sin. So you might be okay with cohabitation because your heart is pure. Maybe you grew up in a small room. Which I disagree. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, wait. Of course, I also disagree. I'm saying personally, your heart, okay, I know I understand. Yeah, you. because people claim to say, well, we are not doing anything. Yeah, but let's assume, but let's, really... assume let's assume, <laughs> let's assume, let's assume that you are fine with it. Your heart is pure. Like, uh, uh, we are just, I'm just brother. I can oh, open my chest and you know, you. you'll do anything you want. It won't, I won't be moved. I'm Mount Zion. I shall not be moved. <laughs> all right. So you can be like that because of your environment, because of your uprising and all that. But then the question is, do you know what is going on in the mind mm. of the people around you? Yeah. All right. So when you are sleeping on the same bed, do you know the thoughts that is going on in their hearts? Why are you tempting the devil? <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, that's our thought. I just feel uh, it is wrong. All right. And if indeed we have yielded our thoughts, our emotion, you see, these things will still come back to consecration. How much have you sanctified? You see some people, they say, ah, I can do everything except this one thing. There's that one thing that's ready to satisfy. <laughs> and that's what God is asking for. And that one thing, the devil will use it to stop them from many things. You know, for, for us, I don't know how 
things have gotten so this far because I, I believe the devil is just the devil is just it just wants to pervert things, you know. Mm -hmm. Because it shouldn't get to the point where we are asking is cohabiting right or is cohabiting not right. Yeah. You know, that's because there's something about that particular that <laughs> yes. There's something about it that the devil is using, you know. One thing that we encourage here is if you want to live together, please get just married. get married. Yes, you know, COVID has taught us a lot of things. You don't need too much money to get married. We're not everywhere. The bola can be transferred wirelessly. <laughs> but, in terms of the ceremony, that's what I'm saying. In terms of the ceremony, you know, well, we still can't see it. We still can't, we still can't see. Uh, but, but the thing is, the thing is, if your heart is committed to getting married, you, you know you are ready for it. God, God is your heart, and God available. will make the resources available. Marriage is not just about resources. In fact, things in the kingdom of God, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith and not by sight. What that means is most of the things we do as a righteous man, mm -hmm. you have to do them first from a standpoint of faith. Yeah. All right? And then your faith will attract every other thing for it. To you we saw the marriage um the marriage that happened in the bible the one that you see that marriage gave us a template of how god wants our love life to be that god himself can be the sponsor of the things you do so but when you have decided to you see hmm, you see what happens when people are cohabiting and doing those things they are turning stone to bread <laughs> i remember that was the first temptation of jesus Turning stone to bread is doing something that you can do to satisfy yourself that is not in line with the principle of God. Has God made bread to be obtained from stone? No. It is to be made from wheat, right? Yeah. But the devil will tell you to, he knows this thing is not the right way. Mm. He, will he will always tell you, and that was his first temptation. That was the first yeah. temptation of bro, Adam and sister Eve, but they failed it. All right? That flesh, that flesh, it needs to be crucified. That thing that is desiring it. All right, that is asking that question again and again. I know if the if the question if we go and ask it in another seminar again, another seminar we keep asking it. I mean, the, whoever is asking it, all right, uh, whatever desires to ask that, all right. Ah, seven question more. Really, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, I think we go. Yes, yes, I think we can. Maybe we should pack all the questions together. Um, sister Soledad, please, you can, you can go ahead. Okay, um, let me read all of them. Okay, the first question is, how do we navigate differences in religious beliefs within a relationship? Okay. Um, the second question is, many of us, because of long-term singleness, are used to praying by ourselves any advice on how to cultivate the habits of praying together as a couple? Mm. The next question is, how can we prioritize God in our relationship without neglecting each other? Um, the fourth one is, what are some of the red flags to watch out for in a Christian relationship? Um, the next one is, do not be unequally yoked. Would you also say this applies for people who are at different levels of maturity? Is it wise for people with different spiritual maturity levels to date? Or does it not matter? Then the next question is, um, the person is asking, how long have you been married for? And what are the challenges that you still struggle with and are working on as a couple? And what was the previous struggle that you guys had as you continue to grow in holiness? Then um, moving on to the next question. The next question is, what can you say about someone who could be a Christian but does things that affect your relationship with them, making the relationship and safe for you even when they tell you they've changed but because you've experienced them apologizing for things they do yet they don't seem to have really changed and then the last question is about dating is not 
testing the mic. Yes. But isn't it a way to see if I am compatible with a person? If in the middle of dating, I discover that we are not compatible in certain areas, isn't it fine to stop and date another person and continue dating different people until I find the one I am compatible with? Trial and error method even, because not all of us are able to discern and see spiritual, spiritually whether the person we or I am thinking of dating is the right one. Oh, and then the other question, I think you guys have been able to answer it about cohabiting. Yes, thank you. We cannot hear you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Thank you so much, big sister. I was saying that if you have it typed down, we appreciate it. We can just copy and paste it in the maybe to us personally or on the chat. Okay, okay. All right, thank you so much once again. All right, and thanks to everyone that have asked the questions. Uh, we try as much to answer them. All right, uh, about navigating um for difference. Um, differences in beliefs religious, uh, religious beliefs. beliefs and all that uh, coincidentally that's um, a current body in our ministry and uh, we in fact this is the focus of the next event uh, right where we have some people that will be talking about it all right uh, because we believe that is really really important uh, personal differences um, cultural differences temperamental differences love language a lot of differences all right uh, but in a nutshell um, should I go Yes, please. All right. I always say that at the end of the day, it comes again to if you're not married, all right, what is the impact of that difference on the future of your relationship, on your work with God, and on your purpose, your assignment from God, all right? If it does not, if it's not a threat, a serious threat to it, all right, then you can consider making sacrifices, all right? But if it's a serious threat to it, right, then you may want to maybe have a serious discussion with the person. All right. Uh, and of course, we have to also understand that uh, before marriage is not like a do or die. I mean, you don't have to compromise on important things of destiny just because uh, you are in love. All right. If it's something that compromises, then you can reconsider your decisions. Yeah. And then the next one, how to cultivate habits of praying together. I think there's a question. OK. OK. Thank Those you so much. Long -term singleness. You're used to praying by yourself. So how do you cultivate the habit of praying together as a couple? Yeah. Well, I, I will say um what I learned from a mentor, all right, and I will say what has worked for us. All right. To tell you the truth, it's also very difficult. It's well, it's it is now is a bit easier for us, but it is difficult because we have different tastes. We have different the songs I like, all right, are long stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But my son, wife likes um a different kind of songs, all right. Uh, and where I pray is probably different. She considers it as too noisy, right? So sometimes I just prefer to pray, you know, by myself, all right? But what is first important is, uh, and this is it about holiness, it is first of all a personal experience with God, mm -hmm. all right? And whatever you share together should be an outflow of your fellowship with God so that you have had a good time with God and you come together also and have, uh, even if it's five, 10 minutes, you're able to spend together, but ensure you have a more quality time personally with God, all right? And in your time with God, God is going to now teach you things on how to adjust to one another, mm -hmm. all right? And how to, you know, just different uh, ways to understand one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a reason for the mentor, and it, I've seen it work in our life. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, how to prioritize without neglecting each other? How to prioritize God without neglecting each other? Mm -hmm. yeah, go. Yes. All right. So uh, this, again, um, is like a, is a very dicey, interesting question, all right? Because sometimes people ask that um, if God calls, okay, what is what is the priority between ministry and family? And family. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, I say that, all right, Family should come before ministry, but God should come before family. Why? Because God is the one that binds the family together. Why ministry is the work of the family? All right. Many times, putting ministry above family, all right, people think they are putting God above family, but that is not it. 
what is just happening is just our passion, our desire to serve God, all right? But putting God above the family means listening to God and receiving grace for whatever it is we have to do, all right? And receiving wisdom for whatever it we have to do, all right? And there we get to see God give us wisdom on how to undo certain things. We see God giving us, you see, I say, uh, uh, holiness helps us to see the truth as it ought to be. So we see, for instance, if God, if, okay, uh, l- let me read it again, just to be sure I'm still on track. Prioritize God in our relationship without neglecting each other. All right. Uh, uh, in in the most simple way, all right, it means uh, understanding that your time with God, all right, is uh, is is should also include praying for your loved one. Mm-hmm. All right, and when you do that, there's ideas that come. This is what works for me. There are ideas that come. All right, and there is a strength that comes. All right, that uh, nourishes the person such that when you come together, all right, it gives you, productive. you know, sorry, it's productive. It's it's a productive yeah. time. All right. For instance, in praying for my spouse, I can receive ideas on oh, um, how to spend time with him. Yeah. You know, I can receive ideas on what gifts to give to him. So the my spending time with God is not. A selfish is not for a selfish reason, yeah. you know, but it's also in a way to also nourish the home. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, we hope that is answered. Uh, the one about red what flags. are some red flags to watch out for in a Christian relationship? All right. Uh, first of all, uh, honor God. All right. Honor. Honor one another. Honor one another. The person should not violate you. All right. Uh, the person should, should not you. be abusive. Should not be abusive. <laughs> right. Uh, the person should not have by abusive self. It's not like just abusing you or just abusing people generally. Mm-hmm. All right. Because there's an image of God in people. All right. And you have to treat people with the way you treat God. So if you see someone, they are good to you, but they are not good to people. They are wicked to people. All right. It's, it's just a matter. Of it's time. just a matter of time because there's a nature in them that is is sponsoring that. All right. All right, so uh, those are, of course, some of them may just be maybe um, traits and all that that needs to be corrected, all right? But those are things that you need to talk about because it's a matter of time. For instance, if you see someone that is rude to their parents, all right, uh, rude to just naturally rude, is something you might want to talk about or else in the near future, it may be you that will be the uh, recipient. All right, and the Bible says that do not, uh, do not cultivate friendship this is me paraphrasing now with an angry man. So if you see someone that every time they are hungry, they destroy things, all right? It is a dangerous thing, all right? It's a dangerous thing. Over it. time, it's you the pounce on. <laughs> all right. They eat things. They do They do things. Then they now come back to their senses, all right, and say, right, they have to deal with that, all right? Or else, it's, I mean, it's a dangerous thing. It could be in the car. It could lead to accidents. It could lead to many, many unpleasant things, all right? So that's, uh, that's just few and people that cannot discipline themselves their appetite all right uh if you if they know that something is not good for the health of the relationship and they are still uh not in a desire to you know to make to the necessary make changes. necessary changes all right uh it is it is a red flag all right do not be unequally yoked would you also say this applies for people and at different levels of maturity is it wise for people with different spiritual maturity level? Well, when it comes to this thing of spiritual maturity, we have to understand that um, uh, the metrics are a bit dicey, all right? So you, you might say that because you are a pastor now, you are spiritual, more spiritually matured, all right? But in the sense of it, what determines how mature the person is is how submitted the person is to the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? So... Um, uh, I we I may want to ask that how submitted is is the person to the authority of the scripture, all right? So if they are submitted and if they have a desire to grow, to grow, all right? Yeah, I think it's quite important because teachability is very important because yeah. sometimes if you oh this person is not yet spiritually matured based on your own metrics, yeah. But you, if you come back in the next three to six months, if I'm the person you, is very I'm teachable. You know, and is willing to go and submit, you know, to God's tutoring and everything. In three, six months, mm. the person might have been a different person. And sometimes you know? people that are spiritually mature that cause more problems in the relationship. 
I mean, I say spiritual immaturity. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you look at those metrics. The fear of God is the fear of God present here. Mm-hmm. Do they have desire? All right, to grow. All right, uh, uh, mm-hmm. to grow. In... So don't, don't, um, don't conclude based on people's current level of maturity. What you should look out for is the teachability and their hunger to grow and receive more of God. And of course, understanding of the things of God. And when you speak to when you speak about it, yeah. all right. If you are someone that God has an important assignment for, all right, that will require a weight to be able to carry it, mm-hmm. all right, either as a man or as a woman, all right. You know, you need someone that will probably be praying with you on the journey. I you know this person does not he, he does not probably is interested in talking about this or even learning to pray about this. All right, so you may probably want to reconsider that. All right, because there is a level of maturity that is required to, to carry. Assignment. Yeah, so it, your assignment also still determines the yeah. consecration that you need and the other person needs. All right, and it's actually for their own good because at the end of the day, if they come because of love and they don't have the capacity, they may crumble under the weight of the pressure. All right. Um, what can we say? Uh, we are not jumping. This one, can you ask them? How long can you ask them how long they have been married? Well, uh, this year we make it um, four years, right? Since 2019. Yes, yeah, since 2019. Yeah, four years. Yeah, this year we make it four years. We got married in December uh, 14. 19. Uh, December. <laughs> this year. December 2019. Sorry, this year we'll make it five years old. We are growing old. Oh, he still feels young. Yeah. All right, so this year we'll make it five years since December 2019. All right. Um, what challenges? Would what challenges? Uh, a lot, a lot. Go and buy the book. Manage <laughs> a long distance relationship. They are, they are, I mean, it's like a chronicle of our experiences and we can't probably share everything we don't do. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. Um, question What can we say? about someone who could be a Christian but does does things that affect your relationship with them, making the relationship unsafe for you even when they tell you they've changed or because you've experienced them apologizing for the things they do, yet they don't seem to have really changed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a familiar question. <laughs> well, I think this, this, this really talks, I think we talked about, you know, bearing the fruit of the spirit, you know, allowing the life of God translate into our character and how we behave, you know. So if, if uh, well, it's, 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 uh, I don't know, I don't know what to say because if the person keeps apologizing and apologizing over and over again and has not really changed, then the person really needs help, mm. you know. It could be that the person is manipulative or the person sincerely needs help. Mm. You know, to come out, come out of that repeat, repeat, mm. you know, repetition of you know violation or whatever. Mm. For because if the relationship is unsafe, the person needs help or the person is manipulative. Yeah. And so what can have, the other partner do? And they may have things they are dealing with. So the question is, if you have the patience to endure the journey yeah. of their transformation or their growth. But even the endurance, the time it depends on what exactly is the person is. doing. Yeah. What exactly is the person doing? So we might actually need more information. Yeah. You know, what exactly is the person doing? Because there are some things that are not negotiable. Yeah. You know, and you say, no, 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 no. This is not something that should be endured. Mm. Especially so, if it's against God's word. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so we might not be able to give a full answer for this, but we'll just say that if 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 it's outrightly outside God's word, then, but if you feel like the person is still growing and the person needs help, you can cry out for help and, you know, for counseling such that you can discuss the things to details and the person can be helped mm. such that the relationship will, mm. will grow. Mm. And, and again, uh, we talked about uh, consecration of the mind, all right, uh, thinking alike, renew your mind, and that can be a mutual thing. Mm. You can both understand that this is a threat to our relationship. If you both agree to it, I, th- I mean, any habit can be broken, all right? You know, I said that one of the things I don't like saying to myself is that something cannot be done, all right? Any habit can be broken. Anything you want to do can be done. 
if you are ready to say, not my will, but your will be done. God showed me the way, all right? If God can show you ways, including uh, giving you um, you know, strategies, and I would suggest that you probably go for counseling as well. Yeah. Dating is not testing the mic, yes. Okay, no, the person said yes. I'm reading the question. But isn't it a way to see if I am compatible with the person? If in the middle of dating, I discover that we are not compatible in certain areas, isn't it fine to stop, stop and date another person, person and continue dating different people until I find one I'm compatible with? Try a narrow method even because not all of us are able to discern and see spiritually whether the person we are all right. Well, we want to talk about this. Yeah. Well, as we, we say that it's not a do or die thing in the sense that if along the line, maybe you're in a relationship with someone and you discover that, oh, there are things that are non-negotiable and I can't go on. Yes, it's fine. However, we are not in the business of breaking people's hearts. You know, we are not in the business of breaking people's hearts. We rather we give life. You know, we give life. So the best thing to do, which we've actually mentioned, is to create friendship, you know, build friendship at the initial stage, which yeah. is what we did before we got married, or before we even started our relationship. Yeah. You know, we were friends for some time. I think it was for about three months or so. Yeah. How long was it? I'm not for, sure. For before before the relationship started, was it one month, two months? I think just three months, three from months. February to around um, May. Yeah. So we we're friends for about three months, and we kept talking. You know, yeah. we were talking, asking questions, and everything. You know, and then after that, after those three months, we we're like, okay, I think I can work with this person. Mm -hmm. So that's usually the best advice from us. So it's so that you don't keep dating and dating and dating and dating people and breaking people's hearts. True. Yeah. All right. Uh, because of our, because of time, I believe we've uh, we've taken a lot of time. Uh, we like to draw the curtain here and hand over to Bro Terry, Bro Terry, Big Brother Terry. Thank you so much. Uh, we hand over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, because of time, I'd like to just um call Brother Eddie to finish with us yeah brother eddie over to you please okay thank you thank you very much oh we really are blessed to have you guys mr and mrs adewoyi i hope i'm pronouncing the the name right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh we are really blessed this was a really packed session and i'm glad that we got the foresight to actually record it for those of us that would like to, you know, replay and listen and listen again, that will be really amazing. I hope the media team, you'll be able to get it to us on time. Um, yeah, we just want to say a very big thank you from the family here at Genwa ICF. And we are really glad that uh, you were able to share your knowledge with us. And I pray that God will continue to increase you in your marriage and also, you know, um, give you more offspring in Jesus name. <laughs> amen. 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 <laughs> yeah. So uh, before, before we, we go, can we just say a, a word of prayer for them? Can we just, wherever you are, you can just close your eyes whilst we say a word of prayer for our lovely guest. Uh, Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Father, we thank you for bringing such an amazing, an amazing couple to us to share their knowledge with us. Father Lord, I pray that wherever that they are, whatever that they do, you yourself will continue to be with them and increase them in knowledge and in grace that they will continue to impact and touch lives so that they will help build relationship that will stand for the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we pray and commit each and every one, everyone that has joined us today that whatever that we've been able to learn, we'll retain and practice it in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. If you are blessed, can you please type in the chat box? I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Just, just let's, let's see you in the chat box. Let's see in the chat box that you've been blessed. Because, yeah, this was really, really powerful. This was really, really powerful. Yeah, we thank God. We thank God. Uh, we have a, a small token of appreciation for our our, our guests. Um, yeah, media, if you can help me, if you can help me, 
if you can help me um, with the certificate, if you can show it online. Uh, media, are we there? Okay, okay, okay. I think they are setting up. Uh, yeah, there's just yeah, a small certificate of appreciation. And I think that we'll be able to get you the the hard copy very, very soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah it says here, yeah, in appreciation of your ministration, as the quests, as the guest speakers for the relationship seminar hosted by Genoa ICF. On February 16, 2024, online on Zoom, Jehua ICF is greatly honored and impacted by your presence and your prayers for the Lord's continuous anointing upon your life. Amen, 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 amen. So thank you. I hope, you know, uh, yeah, we, 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 you were talking about uh, some books. So I will, I will contact my chairman. Brother Terry, and I'm sure that, yeah, people will be able to get those books in due time. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's the contact information for the books. Yeah, so please, if you can, you can screenshot, you can save the number. And yeah, if you really, if you want to get the books, you can contact them directly and they will, they will get you the books. Because, you know, this was just a tip of the iceberg of, of what is in the book, you know. <laughs> Uh, we couldn't go all the we couldn't go all night <laughs> yeah and i'm because i'm sure there's a lot of information in the book so i encourage each and every one of us to try and get a copy it will really really be helpful in jesus name amen 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 yeah so we are done for this this session and for those of us who are on ground in Genoa. Tomorrow we have the second session, which is in person. So yes, please make sure that you are there. Uh, yeah, and it will be streaming on Zoom also. So I think yeah, the same the same link will work for the for tomorrow's session, which is offline. Uh, so those of you who are not here, you can also join. It will start at two p.m. It will start at two p.m. So you can also join and then.